Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at whether the Queen's Guard really can't react to people while they're on duty. Just before we get started, I do want to say that this video is brought to you by Backblaze. Get a 15 day free trial by going to backblaze.com forward slash brain food. The Queen's Guard comprises of various soldiers tasked with guarding the residences of the Queen and, by extension, the Queen herself. Consisting of soldiers mostly handpicked from five elite regiments within the British military, the Queen's Guard are internationally renowned for their stoic dedication to duty. However, contrary to popular belief, these soldiers are permitted to move and do so regularly, even when just on guard duty and not on parade, and in certain circumstances do react to hecklers or the like. That said, while on duty outside of the Queen's residences, these sentries are trained to remain unflinching in the face of everything from extreme weather to to screaming abuse a few inches from their faces. In fact, if they end up having to relieve themselves during two-hour shifts, generally two hours on, four hours off, they remain just as outwardly unflappable, instructed to simply perform their necessities right in their thick woolen trousers, which, according to guardsman Sean Marsden, are sufficiently dark to cover their embarrassment. While this might seem a short span of time to ever have this occur, it should be noted that on hot summer days, guardsmen are instructed to drink very large amounts of water before going on duty to attend to prevent heat stroke and dehydration. But despite these bastions of British Stoicism's reputations, they do move regularly. At least every 10 minutes, they will turn and patrol their post. This usually involves taking 10 or 20 paces one way and then back before once again resuming their vigil. Occasionally, a guard may also perform such a march to approach an individual within their vicinity who is being a particular nuisance or the like, but the more common purpose of these little jaunts is usually just to get the blood flowing again to keep it from pooling too much in their legs, potentially causing the soldier to faint. Speaking of fainting, if a soldier begins to feel themselves succumbing to such, they are taught to faint to attention. This basically means that they must faint while maintaining their standing at attention pose. In practice, when achieved, this tends to result in them falling rather rigidly over like a toy soldier, which is why there are pictures of guardsmen laying face down rather than more or less crumpled on the internet. Fellow Queen's Guard members around said individual are forbidden from deviating from their duty if this occurs and will in fact march straight over their fallen comrade if necessary. Medical personnel will of course be sent out to attend to the individual when this is observed. While not a common occurrence, this does happen every now and again. For instance, during the 2017 Trooping the Color in which temperatures sat around 27 degrees Celsius, that's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, five of the Queen's Guard, baking in their many layered thick uniforms and bearskin hats, passed out. Beyond fainting and marching, the guards may also move about in a variety of other ways. They are guards odds after all. However, given their role has largely been reduced to a merely symbolic one, with local law enforcement generally taking care of any problems that arise around the Queen's residences, today one of these elite soldiers breaking their normal stoic stance is generally simply due to tourists, rather than a real threat or the need for them to perform as actual guards. That said, members of the Queen's Guard will rarely openly react to tourists taking photos or telling them jokes to try and make them laugh, and are, in fact, specifically instructed to ignore stuff like this. However, if a group of tourists is being especially annoying, the guard may make their best effort to ruin the picture or the like, for instance, by suddenly turning and marching right when the tourists are all posing for a photograph with the guard. In one instance we came across, a guardsman noted that he'd continuously just march when such tourists are around, passively aggressively getting them back for their disrespect, somewhat akin to the Seinfeld soup Nazi. Speaking of marching, should you get in the way of a member of the Queen's Guard who is doing this, you'll likely find yourself having said soldier shouts something to the effect of, make way for Her Majesty's guard. Failure to move out of the way will result in you being knocked over, as one hapless man found out in 2015. Although to be fair to said man, no one in the guard chose to yell, make way, until after they ran into him, and he clearly was oblivious to their presence before the collision, so he wasn't trying to disrespect them. One guardsman also noted that, while exceptionally rare, occasionally a tourist will tell a particularly good joke, which may elicit a smile or even laughter from him. So if a soldier is caught in such a slip in composure, they get docked pay a few days to a week's worth depending on the severity of the infraction. They may even face other punishments, including in extreme cases being kicked off the guard. Thus, while trying to get the guard to lose their composure may seem all fun and games to tourists, if one is successful and the guard's superiors find out, that person may just have screwed with the livelihood of said soldier, who, 
is in the first place not exactly getting rich being a member of the guard. They are generally paid somewhere between £1,200 and £2,000 a month, which is about $1,500 to $2,600. As for sanctioned interactions with people, should the guard deem someone enough of a nuisance, though not necessarily a real threat, with, in that case, the guards free to react however they see fit to deal with the situation, they are instructed to do the following. Come to attention sharply, involving a very loud stamp, which is all the more startling when said soldier was otherwise motionless before. Shouting sharp instructions at the individual being a nuisance. This might be something like, step back from the Queen's guard, with the guards required to keep their warnings and ultimatums brief and to the point. Then there is marching towards the individual and pointing the bayoneted rifle directly at the person being a nuisance. If all else fails, they can detain the person causing the disturbance or press a button in the sentry box, which will alert police and they'll come and deal with the situation. One potential almost surefire way of eliciting such a strong reaction is to touch the guard or otherwise exhibit extremely disrespectful behavior, such as marching along beside the soldier in a mocking fashion while insulting the guard verbally. And if you're wondering whether said rifles that are pointed at your face in such a scenario are loaded or not, well, they're usually not. Though one imagines having a sharpened bayonet wielded by a highly trained soldier shoved in your face is intimidating enough, even if you know that the gun attached to it's not loaded. Occasionally, the guard do carry ammunition with them, though, particularly when there's knowledge of a credible threat to the safety of the queen or nation, or otherwise when a heightened state of security is ordered. In these cases, if necessary, the soldier can load the rifle in a blink of an eye by simply ejecting the empty magazine and popping a full one in. And yes, as actual guards, even if their duties today are mostly ceremonial in practice, said individuals are authorized to use deadly force when appropriate, most notably if they feel their own lives, members of the royal family, or the general public near their guard post are endangered. As an idea of what the Queen's Guard have long had to deal with from people, former guardsman Ronald Tibbetts notes, some march up and down with us and others pull out bearskins. Some people put fag ends down the rifle butts, some stick oranges on the end of the bare net. It's also noted that having banana peels or other such items placed along a soldier's marching route is occasionally a thing. People also sometimes attempt to untie the guard's shoelaces. One member of the guard even noted it wasn't uncommon for people to stick pins in you to try and make a guardsman flinch. It's not all bad though, and guardsmen have noted that some people are quite respectful when approaching for photographs and the like. Further, one guardsman noted in an interview there was a general perk of frequently having women flashcards to get a reaction, and also sometimes having phone numbers and addresses slipped into their pockets by those women no doubt wanting to see whether the ability to stand at attention for hours at a time translates into the bedroom. Today, many problems the Queen's Guard have long had with the general public has been mitigated somewhat. To get around the fact that the public seemingly can't be trusted to act respectfully around said soldiers, the guards, in many but not all cases, now stand behind fences or roped-off areas. They still have to deal with the heck of course, but at least now can, in many posts, avoid being stuck with pins. And now for some bonus facts. Given the mostly ceremonial nature of the posting these days, you might be wondering what the guards actually think about while standing for so long. One guardsman noted, Sometimes I just watch people. That, after all, being partially what they're supposed to be doing, keeping alert for any threats. But at other times, I tend to sing songs in my head or try to remember as much of a movie from start to finish in my head. I've gotten pretty good at that. Before a parade, the iconic bearskin hats of the Queen's Guard are shampooed and conditioned to make them look as glossy and as full as possible. And now for another fact. Individual soldiers are also expected to comb their hats on a daily basis. These bearskin hats are made from Canadian brown bear and generally weigh about about one kilogram, though get significantly heavier when it's raining. And now for another fact. The practice of the guard wearing large bearskin hats dates back to the early 19th century, with the hat's purpose primarily meant to intimidate by making the soldier wearing it look much taller. And now for another bonus fact. In some ways, the Queen's Guard are comparable to the soldiers who guard the Tomb of the Unknowns in the US. Both are famed for their discipline and commitment to duty, and both can, contrary to popular opinion, deviate from the strict regimented routine should a member of the public act in a disrespectful manner. And now for another bonus fact. Although the soldiers who serve in the Queen's Guard are invariably a member from one of the five regiments of the Foot Guard from the British Army's Household Division, specifically the Grenadier Guards, the Coldstream Guards, the Scots Guards, 
the Irish Guards, the Welsh Guards, meaning the Queen is protected by soldiers from the four countries that make up the United Kingdom, they can, in theory, hail from any regiment serving in the Commonwealth. Because of this, the duties of the Queen's Guards, on occasion, have been assumed by everyone from the Royal Marines to the Canadian Expeditionary Force over the years. It's great always to welcome back a regular sponsor, and Backblaze is one of those. If you don't know, Backblaze, they are an online backup service. They make it ridiculously easy for you to take all of your computer's files and make sure that they are safely backed up on the cloud somewhere else so that if disaster happens and your computer explodes or whatever happens to it, you can get all of those files back. I really don't need to mention how important it is to back up your files. I, you know, it's just absolutely essential. Imagine if your computer died, you'd lose work, you could lose, uh, if you're at school, you lose your schoolwork or vital documents. It's certainly convenient that computers hold all that information for us, but it is one little place that can go wrong to keep all that information. That is why you need a backup solution. And Backblaze should be that solution for you. Basically, all you need to do is download the software onto your PC or Mac. You can do that by going to backblaze.com forward slash brain food, and that supports the show. You also get that free trial. And you can just download that program, install it, and let it run. It kind of quietly sits there in the background, uploading all of your files to the cloud, and basically, kind of that's it. It's all automatic. It all it all happens behind the scenes. And if you're worried about your files being out there, don't be, because everything uploaded to Backblaze is 100% encrypted. So all of your files are totally safe and you have total privacy. So I've used Backblaze for well over a year. I started using them because I looked into the solutions. They were the best ones. So it's really, I really can say here that they are a great service that I've been using for a long time. And the great thing is even for someone like me who's a heavy user, they have unlimited backup. So I don't butt into any of those things. And it's like, oh, as a YouTuber, you got lots of video. We're gonna charge you a whole lot more that we didn't tell you about. Not like that with Backblaze. And also they've restored over 23 billion files. So really, they're not messing around. And let's say that your computer does blow up or you have something more mundane happen like having your laptop nicked. Uh, in that case, all you need to do is log onto the website and you can download the files. And if, like me, you've got a bunch of files up on there, then you can just ask them to send you a hard disk or a USB flash drive with your files on it that's shipped to you. And you can either keep it for a totally reasonable fee or you can send it back and they'll give you a full refund. So if all of this is sounding great to you and it should, or maybe you've just been thinking, oh, I should have been backing up my files, then you need to go to back Blaze. Actually, go to backblaze.com forward slash brain food because that helps support the show. It also gives you a free 15 day trial to see how great it is. So, I'd like to thank Backblaze for sponsoring this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching.